Thank you, Jesus. You're the reason that I live. And this is our declaration today. Jesus, I believe in you. Jesus, I belong to you. You're the reason that I live. And today, uh, we, will, we will see in our preaching today that uh, Jesus has an invitation for us. And this invitation is invitation to greatness. And let's look at it. Thank you, everybody. Welcome to our broadcast this morning. Uh, it is hot, but hey, it's hotter in hell. So let's uh, move on and let's, let's take a look at the invitation to greatness. What is this all about? Last week, we looked at the two roads that leads to either life or to perdition or destruction. And uh, many of you kind of, kind of uh, uh, dug into uh, the hardness of the narrow road, but that was not the intent of the message. The intent of the message was to make us understand that choosing the easy way, the worldly way, and uh, the fleshly way is always going to be broad, easy, and, and easy to go to. But the result, the ending is destruction. It's actually death. It's, it's separation from God. But the road that leads to life, which is narrow, the only reason why it's narrow is for uh, not for us to have a difficulty going through it. It's not a punishment for us, but it is allowing us to be freed from the systems, the structures, and the ways of the world. And therefore, when we walk, the only reason why it's hard is because the flesh resists your uh, personal desire, your personal comfort, and even for, uh, selfishness and, and, and mindset refuses to go that way because that way is limiting. It's only limiting, it's limiting you to the things that would allow you to have life. Selfishness cannot go in that way. Uh, 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 deception cannot go that way. Lied cannot go that way. I mean, I, a... A comfortable attitude only cannot go that way. And so it's not to punish us. It's not to make our heart difficult, but to bring us into a place of narrowness of, or, or lightness of what we carry. Uh, Jesus wants us to carry the lightness, the light things of God, which is not light, but it is resisted and opposed by the Spirit and, and, and your own flesh. And so... Uh, as we keep going into these topics, remember our original thing is really our purpose is to understand, to be able to live the lifestyle of the kingdom of God. And remember, we started with the eight Beatitudes saying that how blessed it is to be pure in spirit for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. How blessed are those who mourn for they shall be comforted. How blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness for they shall be filled. And blessed are those who are merciful because they shall have uh, obtained mercy. And blessed are those who have a pure heart because they will see God. And blessed are those that are uh, peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God, and blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs will be the kingdom of heaven. And this, we will still unpack those eight beatitudes. We taught those in uh, the uh, a few, few months ago, and we will still go into the details of those, and we're still in chapter five. We're still looking at what is this wisdom. Last Sunday, we talked about being wise and great in God's eyes, and one of those, uh, uh, the ways that to, to be wise in God's eyes and to be uh, great in God's eyes is to walk the narrow road, to take the yoke uh, that Jesus offers and is actually uh, inviting us to participate, that his yoke is easy and his, his, uh, his, uh, uh, and, and it's light. And uh, we go there and, and it's simply when Jesus says it, you know, he's saying, you enter, you come to me, you will find rest. You are burdened by the system of the world. You are burdened by the pressures of all that is coming against you because of the sinfulness. Remember Revelation 12, 12, the wrath or the anger of, of the devil, of Satan, is getting uh, fiercer and fiercer and hotter and hotter and angrier and angrier. Why? Because he knows his time is short. 
And so all of these things that we're feeling, all the pressures that is coming against us is not, uh, is not because of us. It's because we have an enemy and we've identified that as the devil, as the system of the world, as sin and as death. All of these things compresses and presses upon us so that we might wiggle our way out and find, you know, human nature always wants the easier way. Unfortunately, to walk godly, to walk the higher way, to walk the way of Jesus. Remember, he said in John, 6, in John 14, I am the way, the truth and the life. And nobody goes to the Father except through me. And so when we follow the way of Jesus, I mean, everything else that has been formed in us that is not of Jesus and is not of the Word of God and is not of the Scripture is going to become a pressure for us. But the good news is God has given us everything that we will ever need to walk this godly life. We have the Word of God. We have the life of God. We have the Spirit of God. We have uh, uh, the unction, the empowerment, and we even have the angelic hosts of, uh, angelic hosts of God to help us in everything that we have to do. We may not see them, we may not uh, feel them around us, but when you spoke, speak in faith, when you believe in faith, when you walk in faith, when you declare in faith, the angels, the host, angelic hosts of angels are activated for you and towards you. And so as we look at the our topic today, let us go there. Let us look at Matthew 5, 19. The invitation is Jesus, in invitation for all to be great in his kingdom. This is, he doesn't want you to be uh, mediocre. He doesn't want you to be crazy, stupid, or foolish, or just lackadaisical, or ignorant of the word of God. He wants you to be great. The only difference is that the definition of God's greatness is not according to the definition of the world. The definition of God's greatness is so much more profound and so much uh, more uh, uh, different than what we know. And uh, his great, his invitation to greatness is also not the least resistance. It is, it is a, a, a walk of faith. Uh, I think the other day I said, a faith is an action. When you take faith, you act on it. But when you put your trust in God, you, you posture that attitude. That becomes your attitude. Day in, day out, difficult, easy. In all of the uh, events of your life, in all the moments of your life, whatever you are encountering, your posture is trust in God. And that's the invitation that Jesus said to us in Matthew eleven twenty nine. 29. Come to me, you who are heavy laden. I will give you rest. Divest yourself of the unnecessary encumbrance of the world. Divest yourself of the unnecessary troubles uh, of sin and sinfulness and lay it, lay it down. Let it go. Let it down on my feet and then rest in me. Trust me. Trust me. Gay, uh, grow in this attitude of trust and confidence in me. And so here in Matthew 5, 19, he says, whoever meaning consistently, breaks one of the least of this command. What commandments? Uh, when we, we were looking at the uh, eight Beatitudes, and then we, we will be looking at, you know, all the other things that we're looking at uh, together as, as part of the Beatitudes with this chapter 5 to chapter 7. And uh, uh, he's saying that, and teach men so, to break it. If you teach men to break it or to disregard these commandments, he says, you shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever, whoever is any one of us who would want, you don't have to be a pastor, you don't have to be a preacher, you don't have to be a celebrity on television to be great in the kingdom of God. But whoever does and teaches what the commandments of God, the ways of Jesus, the ways of the Beatitudes, the ways of love, the ways of, of forgiveness, the ways of prayer, the ways of fasting, the ways of giving. He shall, and the ways of forgiveness actually more important. He shall be great in the kingdom of heaven. So that's the, uh, the parameter to which we become great. And it is so contradictory to the ways of the world. And so let us look at this. Jesus has given us a new paradigm for greatness. What is this? Jesus said, 
to be great is to be a servant of all and in the world no if you're if you're a great leader if you're a great person if you have a lot of money if you run corporations and and uh, 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 all of these businesses or all of these high polluting uh, um, organizations uh, you you're not serving you are being served you're the boss all right but in Jesus's parameter, in his paradigm, or in his way of uh, uh, his way, yeah, is to be great. To be great is to be a servant of all. So look at here, verse 26 is whoever, are you whoever? Every one of us, every one of you in this broadcast is a whoever. And whoever you are, you can desire to become great among you. Let him be your servant. This is the posture. Whoever desires to be first among you, let him be your slave. And, uh, and, and this, this, is, this is hard for the world to comprehend. This is even hard for many of us as a Christian to really comprehend and understand. Because, uh, uh, but it should not be hard. Because Jesus himself in Matthew 10, 45 tells us that Jesus did not come to serve, to be served. He came to serve. And we saw him serving in Matthew 13. We saw him serving uh, and, and, and stooping down into that level of uh, as, uh, lowest level of slavery to not, uh, not just to uh, show us an example, but to allow us to see his heart, allow us to see the kind of leadership he has. His leadership is about service, about loving others, about preferring others more than himself. And thereby, he most, uh, mostly what he did he is, he allowed us to see that his explicit obedience to God, whether it's in his timing, whether it's in uh, uh, actuations, whether in the ways in which he, he was to minister and to serve others and to give, uh, uh, display his manifestation, manifested glory is according to the timings, uh, the, the ways and the orders of God. And so uh, we also see in First Peter 5, 3 that uh, it's not lording over those who are below us, but it is if you're a leader, but it is uh, being a servant of all and being an example here not being lords over those entrusted to you but being examples to the flock and this is so important in this day and in this season for us um for for those of you who are pastors who are in leadership this is this is this is the attitude that we should have it's not to lord over them it's not just to make them just do anything or whatever but our attitude is an example our actions what we teach, what we preach is what we live, and what we live is what we speak. And in that conjunction, in the way that that, you know, uh, uh, abide each other is become impactful and it become uh, very, very powerful to, to break through any darkness and any uh, uh, selfishness that those in leadership would uh, allow themselves to reflect. So here, to, to be a servant of all is really to offer a sacrifice. It's very sacrificial to really, this, a, servant, a servant leader is what we need in this season and in this hour, in the last days. Uh, Self-sacrificing leaders, self-sacrificing uh, members of the body of Christ. So over here, let's go to... Uh, so. Whoever desires to be first among you, let him be slave. All right, that's, that's the paradigm of Jesus. Because he did it, we can do it. We're empowered by it. We're filled with the Holy Spirit. We can do this. Because the Holy Spirit will always lead us into that which exalts God. Which will become an investment, an investiture upon us that we will be, we will be in this category. We will be in this mindset and we will be in this heartfelt devotion to God. So the focus on being great is in his sight. It's to be great is to be great in the eyes of God. Remember last week we were looking at being wise and great in God's eyes. It's for his observation. It is for his desire, for his honor. It is for his worship. When we become great according to the parameters of God, according to his paradigm, we really exalt God in our lives. 
people begin to see who God is in you. And rather than be offended by what you say, and maybe in the beginning they will be, but as they, cons they, they see the consistency of the godly in you, the consistency of God in you, the, uh, the uh, difference between who you are, how you act, and what you say and what you do becomes uh, an, you know, a, a something to think about in them. It starts to know into their hearts. It starts to uh, provoke them. Because this greatness that Jesus is requiring will be based on our heart responses, not on our natural gifting or resources. Thus, it is available to everyone. So it, this, this greatness is available to you. This is whosoever. This is, uh, we have this to flow and overflow in us because we, we abide in the first and the greatest commandment. We just love God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your strength, and with all of your soul. And the overflow of that love and evidence of that love towards God overflows to others. And therefore, your greatness is expressed in kindness. Your greatness is expressed in love, in sacrificing, in, in being real, in being truthful, in being uh, contending against uh, sin and its sinfulness and not allowing uh, the lies uh, and uh, uh, the works of this race uh, be, be pr pr uh, prob prominent in the midst of us. All right. So the greatness that the Jesus is talking about is also focused on being great in his sight rather than inside the man. Greatness will be based on our response, not on our natural gifting or resources. Thus, so it's available for you. Are you whoever? Are you listening? Are you part of the body of Christ? This greatness is available to you regardless of your education, regardless you did not go to Bible school, regardless of you only have two memory verse of scripture, but you live it, you do it, you go for it. This is whosoever. This is your resource. You. This is everyone. This is for you. Amen? All right. The focus of uh, uh, greatness will be based on your response, like we said, but uh, God's invitation to greatness is without regards towards our outward achievements or the size of our ministry impact. It doesn't matter that you are not a big deal uh, preacher on television or a mega uh, church pastor or you are celebrated all over the world. That, that is not the measure. That is not the paradigm of God. That is not uh, the, the, the uh, platform to which he calls us to this greatness. He calls us to this greatness because of our love for him, our uh, desire to honor him and to uh, be impactful to people. So let us look at this. So the measure uh, of our greatness is not in terms of, is in terms of service and uh, that Jesus has provided for us. Remember, Jesus showed us how, how this greatness is all about. I mean, you notice him, if you look, go back to the gospel, you will see him that he was not even, you know, allowing anybody to really uh, put him in the limelight. He was always behind the scene. He was always uh, uh, humble. He was always uh, uh, behind the scene and uh, he did not attract attention to himself. So in this topic today that we're talking about, I would like to, uh, for us to look into several scriptures. And yes, there, there will be several scriptures. So just hang on there. Please pay attention. Stop walking around. Just sit down and just engage with me. All right. He called, uh, we are called to do the following. All right. Jesus called us to the following. Number one, to become great. Can you believe that? He called you to be great. And this greatness is platformed from humility, yieldedness to God, and uh, giving of ourselves to Him. Let us look at the scriptures specifically from, uh, we started from Matthew 5.19. We saw that earlier, that whosoever violates even the least important of the commandments and teaches others to do so, meaning to violate the commandments of God, will be the least esteemed and the realm of heaven's kingdom but whoever obeys them and teaches their truth to others so we are commanded if you have known this truth if you don't have to be a teacher you don't have to be a preacher like i said but just you live this life obedience to god uh, obedience to what he commands and teaches them to others 
then you will. You are now a great person. You are greatly esteemed in the realm of heaven's kingdom. Let's look at another version. The other one is Matthew 18, 4. It's really actually talking about the same thing, but it's saying here, whoever continues, continually humbles himself to become like this gentle child. So this, this greatness is characterized by uh, humility as a child, yieldedness as a child, innocence, and even purity as a child. And uh, we, we, we are great in our obedience in that uh, posture and, and, and attitude, and then we become great in the kingdom of God. All right? And so the other one is, we find it in Matthew 20, 25 to 26. And yes, there will be, like I said earlier, a lot of scripture here, but go look look with me, read with me, and assimilate with me, and let the word of God come alive to you. Here, Matthew 20, 25 to 26, what is saying? Jesus saying, Jesus, knowing their thoughts, called them to his side and said, kings and those with great authority in the world rule oppressively over their subjects like tyrants. But this is not your calling. This is not what God is calling us to do. You will lead by a completely different model. The greatest one among you will live as the one who is called to serve others. That's the paradigm. This is the, the foundation. This is how, what, how Jesus lived. And this is how we should live. And this is how we are great. Amen. The next one would be Matthew 10, 42, uh, verse 30, uh, to verse 43. I mean, it's the same. It's the same thing that Jesus is talking about, but we're talking from Matthew. What did Matthew say about this topic? What did Mark say about this topic? And here in verse 42 of Mark 10, we see Jesus gathered them all together and said to them, those recognized as rulers of the people and those who are in top leadership positions rule oppressively over their subjects. I mean, another in the King James translation, it says rules over them. Uh, but this is not the example you are to follow. Are you listening? This is not the example you are to follow. You may be your, a boss of a big company or a small company, or maybe just in a small leadership, you know. You're, you're not to boss it over people, but you are to lead by a different model. And if you want to be the greatest one, then live as one called to serve others. Your attitude is servant attitude. Preferring to serve others rather than be served by others. And this is so noble, and this is so make, makes you and me great, not because of the uh, popul popularity and maybe wealth that we attain or we have, but because of the attitude of our heart, which is the same attitude that Jesus gave us. Luke 6, 23 to 35 and 35. Here again, this is the same vein, this is the same topic, and this is the same uh, event to which uh, Luke is uh, talking to us about in the same way Mark and Matthew was talking to us about. He says, I promise you that as you experience these things, you will celebrate and dance with overflowing joy. What is this? Celebrate. He's really talking about the uh, Beatitudes. And the heavenly rewards of your faith will be abundant. When you live the lifestyle of the kingdom, remember everything we've been doing, everything we've been talking about in the gospel is for us to see Jesus, to see him how he lived, uh, to see him how he obeyed, to see him in his uh, uh, preference to do the will of God rather than the popular way to do things. And here is the evidence. Uh, he's saying, and the heavenly reward of your faith will be abundant. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God, according to Romans 10, 17. And as we hear the word of God, we gain faith. And as we gain faith, we're able to take hold of the harder things that God requires, and it becomes easier because we believe and we have faith that we can do it, and we can do it because we can do all things through Christ, according to Philippians 4, according to... To his, uh, according to the uh, strength that he infused on us. So because we are being treated the same way as your forefathers and prophets. In other words, uh, this is verse, give me the next verse. Verse 24 continues to tell us, but love 
your enemies, verse 35. See, this is part of the paradigm. This is part of living the, the kingdom principle. And remember, it is not easy to love the enemies. And, uh, but this is the prescription. This is Jesus' command. Love your enemies, regardless of what's going on. Love your enemies, regardless of how unkind they are to you. Love your enemies and continue to treat them well. That is so opposite to what we do, right? I mean, we're easily uh, offended. We're easily hurt. We're easily uh, bittered by this. No, get out of that realm. Get out of that uh, way. That's not the narrow way. That's the wide way. That's the broad way. So even in the money thing, when you lend money, don't despair if you never get it back. Whoa, for it is not lost. Why? You will re receive a rich reward and you will be known as true children of the Most High God, having his same nature, for your father is famous for his kindness to heal. Amen. And then, of course, let me just go back to, uh, let's go, let, let me see the verse 38 of uh, Luke 6 with Sister Imelda in her exhortation for giving. She re referred to this and let us look at it. And, and uh, you know, he says, and give, in spite of all this, give. And it will be given to you. What? And uh, not just the money portion, but the kindness, the prayer that you do, uh, uh, the, the uh, outreach that you do, the reaching out of your hands, the, when you go out of the way, when you obey God for your, own, uh, for your own obedience, you give to others. You supply strength to others. And, uh, uh, and the, verse, uh, the scripture says you will be given good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be put into your bosom. It will be given to you uh, for the same measure that you get. What did you give? What measure did you give? What kind of attitude did you give? It will be measured back to you. What kind of purpose? What kind of desire did you give it? Did you give it grudgingly or did you just give it to, uh, to check out the box? Or did you give it wholeheartedly? This is the posture. This is the attitude of this commandments. Uh, and this is the narrow road. And, but this is the way to greatness. All right. So let's take a look at the next verse. Look at Luke 9, 48. If you tenderly, if you tenderly care for this little child, he was really at this point, he was, he was, uh, a child was given to him. A child was coming to him. And uh, on, on behalf of this child, you are tenderly caring for me. Whatever you do to this little child, Whatever we do to a person that is unable to respond to us in return to our kindness or our gift or our care or our uh, uh, feeding them or our visiting them in the hospital or visiting them in, in jail. Uh, if you care for, for a child and if you care for anybody for that matter, you are honoring me. This is what you say. You're doing this to me. You are honoring my father who sent me for the one who is least important in your eyes is actually the most important one of all. You know, uh, and I would like, just want to segue here. Um, many times uh, the way we estimate somebody, the way we welcome some person, the way we uh, prefer some, someone is sometimes we are very, um, there's an opportunity for us to, respect them, honor them, and look at them from uh, their status, their wealth, or maybe their uh, lead, uh, leadership category or whoever their, whoever, whatever their position may be. But we should not do that. Th that is not the way to greatness. That is not the narrow road. That is the wide road. The narrow road is care for them because they are least. Give them even the best because when you do that, you have done it unto me, according to Jesus. Look at the other one, Luke 22, verse 26. So we are called to be great. Remember that you are called to be great. What, me? Yes, you. Verse 22, Luke 22, 26. But this is not your calling. You will lead by a different model. The greatest one among you will live as one called to serve others without honor. The greatest honor and authority is reserved for the one who has a servant heart. So from here, you can assay yourself. You can, if you're challenged here, if you are reluctant in serving, if you are 
uh, groaning and moaning and even at the verge of complain when you have to serve or to get out, go out of your way. Remember one of the other things that Jesus said, if they ask you to go one mile, go two miles. In other words, exaggerate your giving, exaggerate your, your kindness, exaggerate your love, exaggerate your help, whatever it might be, exaggerate it because this is the servant's heart. All right. The second thing that we are called to is to receive riches in God's, uh, with God in heaven. There is a reward for what you do when you choose the narrow way, when you choose the great way, which is according to the parameter and to uh, the um, in, uh, uh, foundation uh, parameters of God, this is what you get. Look at this in verse 12 of Luke, verse 21, Luke 12, 21. This is what happens to all those who fill up their lives with everything but God. Look at this. Uh, Luke 16, verse 11. This is, uh, have done well, you have done well, my excellent servant. Remember, this talking to uh, the servants he, ga he gave the, uh, the talents to. And he's saying, my excellent servant, because you have shown uh, that you can be trusted in. Can you be trusted in? The way to greatness is to be trustworthy. The way to greatness is to be faithful. The way to greatness is not uh, allowing uh, difficulties to uh, be able to reach out to somebody or to someone with the love of God and thereby show and manifest uh, the love of God for other people. You know, the world really needs to see true love. And you and I as believers, as people of God, uh, who has experienced and is still continually experiencing the love of God and the reality of that love, is the only real, real creature on earth that is able to express the love of God to others. And that's why we cannot defer. We cannot be hesitant in expressing our love to somebody because that may be the only kind of love that they will ever, ever experience apart from the love of God. So, verse 11, if you have not handled the riches of this world with integrity, Jesus is talking about this, why should you be trusted with the eternal treasures of the spiritual world? And so this is the way to greatness, and this is the way to the narrow road. Look at Revelation 2.9. This is Jesus talking to the, the churches. He said, I'm aware of all the painful difficulties you have passed through. He's aware of your testing and your trials. He's, he's aware of the difficult, uh, the difficult situation sometimes when you reach out to others, when you express kindness, when you uh, release forgiveness, and even when you are, your body is in pain and, and you are uh, having a hard time. There's, you have an issue, a medical issue, and uh, when you when you feel all of those difficulties, I mean, it is so easy to be grumpy and to be uh, um, complain. But here, when when you when you when you allow the difficulty, uh, you pass through your financial hardship. You pass through your painful difficulties, whether in your body, in your resources, as in your finances or in your job. Even though, in fact, you possess rich treasure. I am fully aware, Jesus said, of the slander that has come against you from those who claim to be Jews, but are really not, for they are a satanic congregation. Okay, Jesus talking to the church in his day, and today still saying the same thing. I'm aware of all the painful difficulties you've passed through, but trust God. This is where we put our trust in God, and this is where we receive riches with God in heaven. All right, the next one is in verse uh, uh, Revelation 3.18. You know, uh, this chapter is so very powerful and is so very important for all of us today. I keep seeing this verse every time, every time I've been seeing, so count, I counsel you, Jesus' voice. This is the Holy Spirit talking to us, bringing us again, the, the, what Jesus is saying, Revelation 3, 18. And I think this is very paramount for us to really understand and put to heart and really put to action and take faith. So I counsel you, he's counseling us to purchase gold perfected by fire so that you can be truly rich. This is what makes to greatness. 
to be perfected by fire. What is that fire? Fire is testing. Fire is trial. Fire is situation we, we normally could not handle apart from the grace and the mercies of God. And he's saying, I can't tell you, buy gold perfected by fire so that you can be truly rich. Per purchase a white garment to cover and clothe you shameful Adam nakedness. Purchase eyes salve to be placed over your eyes so that you can truly see. This is all you, you pay for these things. You pay for the gold perfected by fire. You pay for a white garment to wear. This is the righteousness of God so that every shamefulness caused by sin and the Adamic nature or the fleshly nature will be covered by the righteousness of God. Purchase eyes salve. You know, put eyes up, buy this, buy this so that you may see the things of God. You may see beyond the surface. You may see the things that truly matters and may understand what it means with accuracy and with clarity. All right, let's look at the next verse. So that is to receive. God called you to be great and God called you to receive uh, riches with God in heaven. Uh, look here. Now the next one is you are called to be ruler over many things. And maybe some of these rewards, you may not see them right here, right here on earth. You see some of them. You see them in the way in your conduct. You see them in your attitude. You see them in how you affect your family, your, your loved ones, your, your friends, your associates, your community. And really, you affect the whole nation because it charges the spirit, uh, the spirit realm with the, the presence of God and the things of God. And to be ruler over many things is uh, the other gifting, the other calling that God has called us. I mean, I know some of you are thinking, I'm, I'm called to do all of this? Yes. And this is why when we see this in the scripture, we begin to be strengthened by faith and believing, and then we posture our hearts to have this attitude of trust in Him. So verse 21 of uh, uh, Revelation 3 and, uh, and, and 23, he says, commending his servant. He's commending. In other words, he is honoring you. The master replied, you have done well. When you've been faithful, when you're walking the narrow way, when you're uh, walking the greatness uh, that he prescribes and proven yourself to be my loyal and trustworthy servant. Is this a posture? If not, hey, the good news is you can be loyal. You can be trustworthy because you have been a faithful steward to manage a small sum or small gifting or a small assignment. Now I will put you in charge of much, much more. You will experience the delight of your master who will say to you, come celebrate with me. And look, we're continuing with verse 23. Let's look at that. Oh, that's it already? Okay. And, and so th this is our way. You, you, you know, go back to the scriptures because I'm going to it fast enough. But you see the, you see the essence. You see uh, the, 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 the depth of it. You see what God is saying. You see the spirit of God in all of these things. Let's go to uh, look. Where am I? Where are we? Okay. Uh, the next call God called you to have authority over cities. Remember, we're talking about the, this is the story of the, the, the steward uh, servant who, who, who stewarded the gifts and the talents that God gave them. And over here is telling us you are called to have authority. You are called to have authority. Uh, and look here, verse 17 of uh, Splendid, he says, you... You, this small matter, I now grant you because of you, you splendid, you, this small matter. Why is that like that? I now grant you authority to rule over 10 porter cities. I mean, when, when you are, when we are faithful with little things or even things that doesn't even deserve any attention, when we're faithful to what God has assigned to us to do behind the scene, no one knows, no one uh, will applaud you, no one will clap their hands, no one will say thank you to you. I mean, these are the places where uh, we gain authority. God gives us authority to do more, uh, much more. And in this particular 
thing that uh, in this particular verse is talking about the authority over 10 cities to rule over them. Um, in, in some of some of us, in our praying, when you've been praying, when you've been praying for a city, like maybe for Los Angeles, or some of you, those of you in the intercessory group, you've been praying for nations and peoples and situations. And because of your faithfulness there, God gives you authority uh, to, uh, to, to rule and to be, uh, have authority over other cities. And that authority is because you're faithful. And that authority is because of your willingness to walk the narrow way. And, and that authority become, uh, is given to you because you, you, you go to the route of greatness, not according to the ways of the world, but according to the ways of the Lord. All right? So look here again. Uh, the next one is God called you to have power over nations. Power over nations. The other one is authority over cities. Authority to rule because you've been faithful for, with little things. Now here you have power over nations. Do you know what it is to have power over nations? It is to have uh, the, uh, the power of God, the dunamis power of God, uh, the excellence of God, the authority of God. So here look at verse 20, uh, verse 2, verse 26 and 27 in uh, Revelation. He says, to everyone who is victorious, we said earlier that if you are whosoever, you're also everyone, right? Everyone. You're not classified only because you're smart, you're good looking, you're pretty, uh, you're rich. No, you are everyone uh, if you are victorious and you continue to do my works to the very end. So we're not only uh, doing temporary things or optional things or convenient things according to our convenience or our timings or whatever is comfortable for us to do, but we are to do his works to the very end. And what is uh, going to happen? I will give you authority over the nations. This is faithfulness. This is steadfastness. This is endurance. This is faith. And this is an attitude of trust. So, to shepherd them. Them what? The people that are charged over you. The people that are uh, uh, given to you. Like for me, as your pastor with Ness, I mean, we shepherd you. We are under shepherds watching over you. Uh, we need to watch you. We need to be faithful to you. As we are faithful to God, we release that same faithfulness to you. And because of that, because of being a good shepherd and a right under shepherd, uh, you will be given a royal scepter. I mean, that's authority. Scepter is a, a symbol of authority and uh, uh, power. And the rebellious will be shattered as clay pots. In other words, your authority, the scepter, royal scepter that is given to you, will destroy rebellion because you are willing to obey, because of your faithfulness to obey God. It shatters rebellion in the midst of you, rebellion in your family, rebellion in your community, rebellion in the nations. Amen? And so that's why I keep saying to you, your attitude is going to transform people and nations. All right. So look at Matthew 19, 28. Again, Jesus here responded. He was, he was answering someone's question. He said, listen to the truth. All right. In the age of the restoration of all things, you, you know, in the last days when Jesus finally returns, there will be a restoration of all things. Some things are already restored right now, but the completion and the totality, and the, totality of, of, uh, the restoration of all things is when the Son of Man sits on his glorious throne. You who have followed me, will have 12 thrones of your own and you will govern the 12 tribes of Israel. Okay, what is he talking about here? In that, in that time, in Matthew 19, 28, he's talking to the disciples, the apostles, okay? And he was saying that they will have thrones in heaven because of their faithfulness in the, la in the days of the restoration, fullness of restoration. But it's not just confined to the disciples. It's confined to whosoever, you. Are you listening to the truth? Are you, you you're contender for this. You are a candidate to this if you're faithful and true to God. 
Amen. It, it's a challenge always to be faithful. It is always, we are always challenged to be uh, faithful, to be fruitful, to be uh, available for God, to be yielded to do His will. Because sometimes it's not comfortable for us. Our flesh gets in the way. But you know what? I'm telling you, the flesh will have to die. Deny yourself. Take up your cross and follow me, was Jesus' instruction in Matthew 16. All right. So what else are we, are we having uh, here in uh, Matthew 20, 21 to 23? Let's look at this. He said to her, what is that that you want? She answered, make the decree that those, that this, my son, he's talking to uh, the parents of uh, the mother of uh, uh, John and, uh, and James. Make the decree that this, my sons, will rule with you in your kingdom, one sitting on your right and one on your left. This is a very presumptuous uh, prayer request. And Jesus replied, you don't know what you're asking. Then looking in the eyes of Jacob and, uh, Jacob and John. Jacob is another word for James, all right? Jesus said, are you prepared to drink from the cup of suffering that I'm going to drink, about to drink? And are you able to endure the baptism into death that I'm about to endure? They answered him, yes, we are able. Very presumptive, but very bold. And look at the verse, verse 23, what he says, what Jesus said, you will indeed endure, uh, indeed drink the cup of my suffering and be immersed, baptized into my death, Jesus told them. But to be the one who sits at the right hand side of, a highest place, highest honor is not mine to decide. My father is the one who chooses them and prepares them. So God designs it. God will prepare it. But we do the acting. We do the stepping. We do the action of faith. And we do the attitude of trusting. And thereby we walk the way of the narrow gate, the narrow path. We, we go that track, okay? Uh, and as we continue to walk the way of God, as we continue to walk the way that Jesus prescribed, meaning Him leading Him, leading us through His way, we become we become so uh, available. We become so loving this narrow way. You no longer want the excess luggage. You no longer want the the looseness and the lust uh, of the world and its desires. All right, so a verse, uh, ne next one is Luke 22, verse 20 to 30. Remember, we're still, God has given you power over nations. Do you want to have power over nations? The way is the narrow way. The way is the great way as prescribed and as formatted by Jesus Christ himself, because this is the way he walked, this is the way he lived, and this is the way of his life. So verse 29 tells us, I give you your destiny. Do you know that today God is giving you his destiny? As we looked at this, as we allow him uh, to, uh, as we answer his invitation to be great in his kingdom, to be wise and great in God's eyes, he gives us the, his, this, our destiny. Our destiny is to be great. Our destiny is to have power over nations, to have authority over cities, to have authority, period, about, over, over all things, to be ruler over many things. Amen. So I'm, I'm promising you, this is Jesus saying, I'm promising you the kingdom realm that the Father has promised me. We will celebrate in this kingdom and you will feast with me at my table. And each of you will be given a throne, 12 thrones in all, and you will make be made rulers on thrones to judge the tribes of Israel. I told you earlier, we saw this in another verse, in another gospel, uh, and, and he's promising the disciples, the throne, all right, over uh, uh, and rulership and judgeship in as, a, as he rules the tribe of Israel, all right. So now here, let's go to, we're almost done. So hang on there, take faith. Uh, he says, I will give you, I, will, I have called you to sit on Jesus' throne. Do you see that? We see this. Jesus already done this. We're already seated on the right-hand side of God. Yes, but and that's our calling. We see that expressed to us in uh, uh, Ephesians 1, 17, 18, 19. And he says, you know, give us the eyes to understand. Flood our hearts with light so that we may see the hope to which you called us, so that we may understand what is this power that is within us. And this power is the same power that raised Jesus from the dead 
and raise him up and sat him on the right hand side of God. And you and I, we are joint heir with him. We're sitting on the right hand side. And so uh, this is what he's saying, to sit on Jesus' throne. L look at Revelation 3.21 is your uh, scripture foundation for this. And to the one who conquers, this is Jesus talking to us, to the one who conquers, the other one is to the one who overcomes is another word for conquer here. I will give, uh, by the way, all the, tra uh, all the scriptures that we're, we're reading is from the uh, Passion Translation. And to the one who conquers, I will give the privilege of sitting with me on my throne. It's a privilege. Just as I conquered or overcome and sat down with my father on his throne, the one whose heart is open. Is your heart open this morning? Because the one whose heart is open, let him listen carefully, thoughtfully, mindfully to what the Spirit is saying now to the churches. Really, this is what the, uh, the church is called to do, to sit on Jesus' throne, to have authority, to have empowerment, to be right there side by side with the Christ, the Son of the living God. The next one is you're called to inherit authority. Inherit, in other words, you inherit it. It is part of your uh, uh, inheritance. It is part of what you uh, are given as, uh, as a child of God or as a believer. And here in, in Matthew 19, 30, he says, uh, can you put that up there? But many who are first will be last, and many who are last will be first, all right? Uh, which is really sometimes most people don't understand what it's saying or just ignore what this uh, verse is talking about, what Jesus is saying. In other words, he's saying that those of you who have are called to a, a position of leadership, you will be last. And those that are called to be under you or to belong to your leadership is going to be first because you are a servant of all and therefore you prefer others and you put their priority over your own priority and your desire. Amen. Uh, verse 9. Next one is, uh, let's look at Matthew 20. Oh, that's Matthew 20. No, verse 27. Because, no, no, no. Yeah. Matthew 20, 16 to 27. Sorry. Now you can, now you can understand what I meant when I said that the first will end up last and the last will end up being first. Everyone is invited, but few are the chosen. This is very critical. This is very important in our walk with God. This is very important in your walk towards the narrow, narrow road. This is uh, the import, the, this is very a uh, uh, big requirement, great requirement for us to walk in the greatness of God. Everyone is invited. In a, the, another translation is every, uh, many are called, but few are chosen. Uh, because the greatest honor and authority is reserved for the one with the heart of a servant. So many, remember, many are called. Everyone wants to come. Everyone wants to go to church. Everyone wants to listen to Bible study. But only few really takes hold of what has been taught. Takes hold of the action that needs to be done. Takes hold of a, a wholehearted obedience to what has been said. And that honor is greatest. And it will be given to that because they have a servant's heart. So this attitude of being chosen becomes the heart of a servant. Are you listening to me? All right, so the next thing is to gain, you're called to gain treasure in heaven. Amen. All right, uh, look at the Matthew 6, 20. Instead, uh, he's talking about do not stockpile, do not, do not, you know, uh, uh, in other words, do not save for just for this world, but make a stockpile. Uh, Instead, stockpile or, or save or, yeah, or, or uh, put up investment in, in heavenly treasures for yourselves because the heavenly treasure cannot be stolen and will never rust, will never decay or lose their value. Everything that you do for God, everything that you do for the kingdom, everything that you do to somebody else in, uh, because you, you demonstrate love and you demonstrate you know, kindness, uh, you, you're investing in heaven. 
and then you tre because you are investing in heaven, your treasure there does not, nobody can steal it. As a matter of fact, it keeps growing by leaps and bounds. The interest, the return of investment of what you have done and invested in heaven is, is so much more. And it never rusts, never decay. And that's why, you know, like when you look at this, so why are you investing on the earthly thing that could be stolen, that would rust and that would decay and would lose its value? That is very clear, right? All right. So again, Matthew 19 Verse 21, again, Jesus said to him, if you really want to be perfect, this is talking to the rich young man, you know, he's, because he wanted to uh, follow Jesus and gain eternal life. And this is what he said, if you really want to be perfect or mature, go immediately and sell everything you own. If you want to, to, to gain eternal life, this is what you do, mature. Uh, you really want to mature? If you really want to grow up, if you want to be uh, walk this greatness, great great road of God, uh, the narrow road, give all your money to the poor and your treasure will be transferred into heaven. Yeah, I mean, this was hard. This is even hard to some of you who's listening right now. But this was hard for the, the young man because he was so wealthy and he had a lot of property and a lot of, you know, uh, treasure on earth. And so then come back and follow me for the rest of your life. Is this something that you would like to acquire? Is this something that you would like to do uh, in your life today? Amen? Or are we like uh, this uh, rich young man that he could not give up his property? I mean, I'm sure Jesus is not saying give all of your money. But well, he said that, meaning don't love your money. Don't love your property. Don't love the things that you own on this earth. But give it up. Let go of it. And then... Come follow me. This is very stringent. This is very difficult. And no wonder that guy left very sad and very sorry because he could not follow Jesus. And Jesus was also saddened. If you know the next few verses of this, he was saddened and he was uh, also uh, sad because this guy chose his property more than him as Lord and Savior to follow. All right. Next one is. Where are we? Mark 10, 21 is the same. All right. Look at it. Mark 10, 21. Jesus fixed his gaze upon the man. I mean, still looking at, we're still talking about the young rich man. He looked at him. He fixed his gaze upon the man with tender love and said to him, yet there is still one thing in you lacking. Go sell all that you have and give the money to the poor then all of your treasure will be in heaven after you've done this come back and walk with me this is very very profound and i know uh, many of us will be challenged to do this but this is what is required do you want to be great in the kingdom of god this is mark 10 21 is for you and for me do you want to be able to walk the straight and narrow road this is Mark 10, 21, prescription for you and for me, not just for the young rich man, all right? So let's go now, almost done, guys. Luke 12, 33. So now go, again, this is still the version of Luke uh, on the young man. Now, so now go and sell what you have and give to those in need, making deposits, what? In your account in heaven, an account that will never be taken from you, your gifts will become a secure and unfailing treasure deposited in heaven forever. Amen? And because you've done this, as in my, uh, Luke 6, 38, you will be also, it will be done to you. It will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, shall man give unto your bosom. The wonderful thing about investment in heaven and the things of God and the spiritual things is that you get it multiple times. You know, if your measure is uh, is uh, a shovel in the natural, uh, the measure of God's shovel is so much more, ten times, probably a thousand times bigger. So don't 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 resist. Don't be afraid to let go. Let's let God. Let's go, let, let God, and let, let us give up. Yeah. To be exalted is the next calling. God has called us to be exalted. Me exalted, you exalted, us exalted, yes. 
if the key is humility, you humble yourself, you will be exalted. And look at Matthew 23, verse 12. Remember this. If you have a lofty opinion, meaning lofty means humble or uh, 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 kind of simpler expression of your opinion of yourself, if you diminish your opinion of yourself rather than aggrandize yourself uh, and seek to be honored, you will be humble. But if you have a modest opinion of yourself and choose to humble yourself, you will be honored. This is this is very this is another scripture that has been uh, misinterpreted or misunderstood because they thought that uh, 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 hum humility here is the one that is misunderstood. That humility is only uh, looking morose or looking a different uh, way, but really humility here, which is hum. Uh, to be humble is really to be obedient, to be yielded to God, to be meek, to be mild. This is the invitation of uh, uh, Jesus in Matthew eleven twenty nine. Come to me, you who are heavy laden. Give you, I'll give you rest. In other words, yield to me. Take my yoke upon you, for they are easy. They are uh, 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 easy uh, to to learn, uh, and they are easy to put on upon yourself. It is not a burden. It is. Uh, a, a liberty, it is a way to freedom, it is a way to the narrow road and the narrow gate, and it is the way to greatness. So again, the last one is Luke 14, uh, 14 11. Remember this, everyone with a lofty opinion of who he is and who seeks to raise himself up will be humbled before all. And everyone who is with a modest opinion of who he is and chooses to humble himself will be raised up before all. Amen. All right. So the next one is to receive honor from the Father. You will. You are called to receive honor from the Father. Do you want to have honor from the Father? Yes, I do. Yes, you want it. And so let's look at it. Verse John 12, 26. Jesus said, if you want to be my disciple, follow me and you will go where I am going. And if you truly follow me as my disciple, the Father will shower his favor upon your life. Yay! I like that. I want that, Jesus. I want to follow you. I want to be your disciple. I want to be where you go. Where you go, I will follow. Where you are, I will go. And this is his promise. And this, the Father will honor you. So to be the one of the few who are chosen for honor. Look at verse 16 uh, in Matthew 20, verse 16. Now you can understand what I meant when I said that the first will end up last and the last will end up being first. Everyone is invited. So, but few are chosen. The few that are chosen is going to receive honor from the Father. All right, the next calling uh, uh Next to last is to gain crowns. God is going, is called you and me and all of us to gain crowns, crowns, yay. You have these crowns that you can lay, take it off of your head and lay it on the altar of God, on the throne of God. Look here, Revelation 3, 11, 10 to 11, uh, yeah, 11. But, no, go to Revelation 2, 10 first, 2, 10, yeah. Do not yield to fear in the face of the suffering to come. He's talking about the tribulation. Uh, but be aware of this. The devil is about to have some of you thrown into prison to test your faith. Yay! Yuck! <laughs> no one wants to go to prison, right? Wrong. We should be able to be ready to go to prison, if needs be, to test our faith and to gain faith and to open the way for others. For 10 days you will have distress, but remain faithful to the end to the day you die and I will give you the victor's crown of life. I mean, I, I believe he was talking to some of the, this is a, he was talking to the church and he was also talking to those who were martyred and will be martyred in the tribulation. All right. And uh, uh, Re uh, Revelation 3, 11, but I come swiftly. All right. Don't worry about the pain. Don't worry about the tribulation, about the sorrows that you will encounter. I will come quickly. So cling tightly with to what you have. <clears throat> what do you have? You have faith. What do you have? You have the testimony of Jesus. What do you have? The blood of the Lamb. What do you have? A love 
not to love your life even unto death, so that no one may seize your crown of victory. Hallelujah. All right. So the last one is you're called to grain, gain heavenly garments. Uh, there is a dress code in heaven. There is a dress code in the presence of God. There is a dress code. Just like um, I wanted you, even if we are online in the services, in this broadcast, I want you to have a dress code that is honoring God, that is uh, understanding that you are, are uh, in the presence of a holy God, in a royalty presence of God, more than the royalty that we dress up for. And in doing that, you know, we begin to understand the heavenly garments that God is going to give us. Look here in Revelation 3, 4 to 5 and verse 18. Here, yet there are still a few in Sardis, he's talking to the church in Sardis, who have remained pure and they will walk in fellowship with me in bright light for they are worthy. See, it is worthy to be faithful and walk purely. And verse 5, and the one who experiences victory will be dressed in white robes. And I will never, no never, erase your name from the book of life. I will acknowledge your name before my Father and his angels. Amen. And the next verse, verse 18. So I counsel you here again. I counsel you to purchase, to do that. I counsel you to purchase gold perfected by fire so that you can be truly rich. Purchase a white garment to cover and clothe your shameful Adam nakedness. Purchase eye salve to be placed over your eyes so that you can truly see. We need to truly see in this hour. We need to truly see in this uh, end times. And verse uh, Revelation 16, 15, that's end there. Behold, I come like a thief. If you're not paying attention, he will come to you like a thief. But he will also kind, come in, the, in a semblance of a thief because it will be sudden. But if you're ready, it doesn't matter the suddenness or the immediacy of his coming. Because you're ready, you will know it. You will be surprised at the thunderous and the uh, power of his return. But God's blessing is with the one who remains awake and fully clothed in me. What is the clothing that we are uh, required to wear? Jesus, uh, wear Christ in you. Be clothed in righteousness. Be clothed in Christ Jesus. He's saying he fully clothed in me and will not walk about naked, exposed to this grace. Wow, you don't want to be naked. I don't want to be naked. They'll see all my love, love, uh, love handles and no one wants to see that. And so here, verse 15, behold, no, uh, go to verse uh, 16. Uh, where are you now? Verse 15. Let us rejoice, therefore, uh, Revelation 19, 7 to 8. Let us rejoice and exalt him and give him glory. Amen. That is an exhortation for us. That is an invitation for us. Because the wedding celebration of the Lamb has come. This is all of this calling for us. This is... Uh, Revelation 19, 7 to 8 is the reason for the narrow road, is the reason for the kingdom lifestyle, is the reason why we have to live in the way of Jesus, in the life of Jesus, and in the truth of Jesus. This is the way for us to be great in the eyes of God. This is the way for us to gain ascendancy in heaven. This is for us to be, uh, to be uh, called to, be, to greatness, called to the riches with her God in heaven, called to have power over nations, over cities, over authority on earth, and so on and so forth, because we are to rejoice. We are to exalt him, Jesus Christ, the Lord, and give him glory, because the wedding celebration of the Lamb has come. It has come. I mean, of course, it's talking about when he returns, but we must anticipate this celebration of the Lamb's wedding because it has come. It is prophetically coming to us every day, every moment, every juncture, every uh, testing, every trial. 
and his bride has made herself ready. You and I, we are the bride. It doesn't matter if you're a guy. This is not gender. This is as a body of Christ, the whole body of Christ, the global body of Christ, those that are waiting, those that are expecting, those that are walking the narrow way, those that are walking in the greatness of greatness paradigm of jesus christ a, a new way of greatness will be uh getting herself ready you and i we will get ourselves ready we will uh, feel and understand the emotion of the bridegroom of jesus christ for us as his bride and as we experience his love his emotion his beauty his majesty we will look like him and we will be ready to be partners with him and compatible to his leadership and his rulership and his bride has made herself ready fine linen shining bright and clear has been given to her to wear at that time in that day of the return of the bridegroom king we will be given this fine linen which is actually represented by righteous deeds of his holy believers we will be wearing white we will be pure we will be holy we will be bright we will be clear there are no blemishes in us we will be able to wear this as a representation of the righteousness of God. Amen. And this is our calling. If you want to be wise and great in God's eyes, here's the invitation for us. Amen. So let us just look at it again. You are called to what? To be great, to receive riches with God in heaven, to have power over nations, to sit on Jesus' throne, to inherit authority in the earth, to be first in authority, to gain treasure in heaven, to be exalted, to receive honor from the Father, to be one of the few who are chosen to honor, and to gain crowns, to gain heavenly garments. And for your response, you just have to receive that invitation. You just have to trust Him and have the attitude of trust in your heart that whatever He's called us to be, He has empowered us. He is with us. He sent the Holy Spirit to walk alongside us, to steer us into the truth, to steer us into the path of narrow road and narrow gate. But we are empowered to do all these things. We can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. There is nothing impossible when we believe, when we have this attitude of trust that we can do this. We are born for this. We are equipped for this. We are entrusted for this. We are faithful because of this. We have loyalty to God because we know that this is the way. Jesus is the only way, the only truth, and the only life. Any duplication or any substitute to his way, his life, and his truth is unacceptable in the kingdom of heaven. As a matter of fact, it will debar you and me in entering because only those clothed in white linen, only those that are ready bride, only those that exhibits righteousness in their lifestyle will enter this narrow road and will have greatness in the name of Jesus. If this is you, I would like to end with, you know, receive this invitation. It's not hard. It's only hard because your flesh resists. The formation of the world system is blocking you and making things hard for you. But yield to God and let His mercies that endures forever take you. Let the Holy Spirit escort you into the very presence of God. Escort you into that place where you can do all things to Christ who strengthens you. Remember, all things will work together for the good of them that loves Him, regardless of what you're facing, according to His purpose. So, Father, we thank You for today that I pray that we received we posture ourselves to receive wholeheartedly your invitation to be great in your kingdom. It is a different paradigm. It is a different parameter. It is a different way as the world's way of greatness, but it is the most powerful way, the most blessed way, and the most honoring way to honor you and worship you, God. 
because people will see, nations will know that indeed we are your followers because we have love for one another and we have honored you and worship you in everything we do. Father, we thank you for every person watching this broadcast, every person who has uh, listened with their hearts open to receive your goodness, to receive your transformative anointing and grace upon us. I thank you for everyone who would listen to this. And if anyone, if you are here and this is the first time you, you're listening to preachings like this, to uh, teachings like this, I want you to know that this is available for you. And all you need to do really is repent of your sin. Turn to Jesus. Turn from the world and turn towards him. To Jesus, the Christ, the Son of the living God, who died for you and paid the price and bled his blood for you so that you may be cleansed and the life that is in that blood may come to you. It is a resurrected life. It is a life that would defy sin and the lust of this world. And it is a powerful life that will make you enter the kingdom of God. You will be enabled to walk the narrow way. And if this is you, and if you have said that and you have received that, receive the forgiveness of God and be accepted into the kingdom of God. Be a new creation where all things have passed away. All things have become new because all things are of God. Be, today we welcome you into the family of God. Now that you're born again because you have received the life of God, receive this life and enter into the, uh, the life of God, enter into the kingdom of God and enter into the family of God. We welcome you. And in Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen, amen, and amen.